This week, Georgia Traveler goes on a beer bounce across the state. Phil becomes a pastry chef. Ashley enters the land of zombies, and Christine hits Thomasville for a little fish and grits. I'd always heard about great breweries south of Atlanta heading all the way to Savannah, so I decided to start a little brew bounce and check it all out. Unfortunately though, here in Hampton, I got myself in a little trouble. Welcome to stop number one, the jailhouse. First off, Glenn, thanks for getting me out of jail there, got in a little trouble, but uh, he got me out of the slammer. What a great name, what a great location here. How'd you find this jailhouse? Believe it or not, uh, my wife and I actually bought the building to open a brewery. We had no idea it was the jail. We talked with some town historian, some folks that uh, have been around the town for a while, and what do you know, it's the old jail. So that's when our brand was born. We knew we were gonna call it Jailhouse Brewing from that point on. The second coolest thing is the names you've come up with for your beers. Let's go through some of those. Okay, so we'll start with Slammer Wheat, uh, which is our American style wheat beer. Oh yeah. It's about 5% alcohol, easy to drink beer. Then we've got uh, Misdemeanor Ale, uh, which is an amber ale, 5.5% alcohol. Oh, that's good too. But still easy to drink, uh, very approachable uh, for a darker beer. And then we've got Mugshot IPA, 6.5% alcohol. Um, and that's uh, obviously more hoppy, uh, bitter beer, which mm -hmm. IPAs, that, that's the style of an IPA. That's my thing, I'm an IPA. You are, yeah, okay, yeah. good. And then uh, Breakout Stout. It's not just good names, the beer is actually very good too. That's what I love about this. And you gotta have that. Even better, the fun continues. We, it is Thursday. That's right. You call it. Lockdown Thursday. <laughs> you have a visitation day as well. Right? That's Saturday, so okay. Saturday's Visit visitation. I love it, I love it. So these Thursdays and Saturdays can really help bring people here. Yeah, and, and that's that's kind of the goal of the tours, not only to uh, allow people to experience our product and get to know us and be involved with the brewery, see where their product, what their drinking is coming from, but also to introduce them to the town and the other businesses that are in town. That was the idea, help build the town. This is stop number one for my uh, right. brew bounce, whatever I'm gonna call it. <laughs> I, kinda, I, I, like, I like the brew bounce. You I like did, the brew I bounce, like the all brew right, bounce. all right. <sighs> oh, I've had an awesome time in Hampton here at Jailhouse, but I gotta get to Macon, stop number two. Why don't you drive? Thank you. About 40 miles south of Hampton, we land in Macon, home to the ever-growing Macon Beer Company. Two college buddies with a mission to bring craft beer awareness to middle Georgia. Well, we met in college and then we went our separate ways, but both ended up in the middle Georgia area. Naturally interesting to him because he's a chemical engineer. I was interested in drinking what he made, so it worked perfectly. And nothing brings awareness to a product better than catchy names. So they begin with making progress. Get it? Making progress. In a place like this where beer culture isn't very prevalent, you have to start out a little conservative. We didn't want to overwhelm them with a 12% double imperial bourbon aged, uh, you know, uh, stout with crushed antelope horn in it. Yeah, doesn't it? I'm kind of stuck with the same old Bud Light, Budweiser, Michelob Ultra, stuff like that. So it's good to try new stuff. We have some other brands like Making Love, which is a little crazier. Uh, that's our cherry blossom beer that has uh, cherries in it. In the summer, we have Making Music, which is um, corresponds to the Bragg Jam. And that's an IPA. We have some other names um, kind of held back and reserved for the future. Until we've come out with enough beers to use all the making puns, we're probably We'll just keep rolling them out. Yeah, there. I mean, there's so many. There's, uh, historically, there was a making Whoopi, which I think was a, it was a hockey team. Hockey team, right? The minor so, league hockey yeah, that, team. Yeah, that's a little bit. We, um, but there's there's a lot of names that are trademark been, though. Oh yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. They renewed it last year. Okay. Well, won't use that one. <laughs> the Macon Beer Company is the latest to get in on the brew tour business, but downtown Macon restaurants like the Rookery have already embraced the craft taste. 
I thought I was just going to be having fun drinking. I'm learning a lot about beer, how it's yeah. made, why it tastes like this, about the cans, the bottles already. I still got two more stops. I got a lot to learn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thank you. All right, time for stop number three. Off to Statesboro. Ale Trail, brew, bounce, lager, slugger. Ale Trail. Hold up, hold up. Now, wait a minute. David is sipping beer, and I'm over here baking cakes? There's definitely something wrong with that picture. But that's okay, Dave. You sample your beer. Chef Phil got this. All right, here we are, stop number three, a little beer in the borough, the Eagle Creek Brewing Company in Statesboro, which at least for now is home to the nation's youngest head brewmaster. You had to learn quick. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you didn't look at beer <laughs> until you were 21 and then had to learn absolutely everything. It's really been a huge opportunity. I mean, it was kind of my, my dream job in a way, so it's, it's really nice to be able to do it, especially starting on this scale. Nobody my age is doing what I'm doing, so I'm pretty proud of that. There are a lot of jealous people. I'll tell you that much right now. He is the uh, the youngest head brewer in the nation, so. I hope so. he can hold that title forever. It, it won't be forever. <laughs> <laughs> we were actually just talking the other day of uh, how short-lived that, that, that honor will be, so we're... Uh, At we're, least we're, right now, as we're taping this, he is. He is, he is the youngest brewer in America right now. He may be young, but I, uh, I'm confident uh, stacking him up next to anybody. We have a very special uh, water system here, so I can reproduce waters from any region of the world. So if I want to make a German beer, I'm making German water, um, and I'll pick a specific city and copy the minerals in their water. So that's really what sets apart our beers, our water. There's not another brewery in Georgia that does it. There's not very many in the U.S. One of my favorite regions that I copy is uh, Pils in Germany, though. It's just a very, very soft water profile. There's not much in it. Um, and because of that, it produces a very, very clean beer that I really like, so. So you're watching these people come on the tours, drinking the beer, and you want to be like, do you know what I did to make that beer? You know what I did to make the water that made that beer? Yeah, well, I try, I try. <laughs> if they come on a tour, I try and tell them about the water because I am, yeah. I am really proud of our water. It's really what sets us apart. Yeah. What I'm learning about these microbreweries is that they're all about the community they're in, promoting this community. It's a small business. It's more along the lines of farm to table. We like to involve the local community and Georgia as a whole. Um, and bring the community in for tours and tastings, uh, let them experience the, the craft beer. Not, there's not a large presence in craft beer in, in South Georgia, so we're hoping, along with a couple other breweries down here, to educate the public and the local people on great craft beer. This is why I let them pour the beers. You need a professional to do this, way too much head. But here, they say don't fear the foam. He's on the phone. Sure, one second. Ah, even the foam tastes good. Brew Bounce, Ale Trail, Stout Stomp, Lager Slogger, whatever you want to call it, we are at stop number four in Savannah. Welcome to Southbound. <music> Brewmaster and managing partner Smith Matthews is a Statesboro native who comes from the family tree of the Sweetwater Brewing Company in Atlanta. I just enjoyed it so much that I really saw myself in the industry and then so I just kind of realigned my whole thing to become, you know, owner of a brewery one day. Tell me about Southbound. Great name. Yeah. This is the last stop on our tour. Yeah. I'm loving this story, I gotta say. Yeah. Loving this story. People playing cornhole. The yeah. bar is full over there. Our slogan is life's a trip, head southbound. Nice. You know, nice. so we make the best beer we possibly can. Mm -hmm. you know, share it with everybody and also incorporate that with music because we just love music so much, you know. So everything we do is somehow in one way or another incorporated right. with music. That's awesome. Yeah. Tell me about the tours here. What we're doing is basically open like Wednesday through Saturday. People can come in for two hours at a time, see how like we make the beer, come check out the experience, taste all of what we have to offer, and do pilot batches, put them on tap here at the brewery, see if people like them. If they like them, then we might actually make a you know a full batch out of it. This is what's cool. I just ran into Jared from Fiddler's Crab House. Mm -hmm. He said he was delivering bacon for yeah. your beer, and that's what I'm drinking right exactly. now. And that's actually the trial run. We're gonna revisit it probably uh, Add a little bit more bacon. You can never have too much bacon, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm hungry and thirsty at the yeah. same time. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, hey, best of luck. All right. The tour has ended. Cheers. Thanks a lot, Smith. No worries. All right. Back in Atlanta, I guess this concludes the beer tour. But you know what? I've just decided it's Monday night, and there's a Monday night brewing company. <laughs> So 
I guess this means I'm gonna be here for a while, but Phil, I heard you've got a story. You're gonna be making some little cupcakes, teeny little cupcakes that are gonna be really tasty, and you're gonna use those big hands to make the little cupcakes. You enjoy that. What happens when you take these big hands and these little guys right here and put them together? We're here at La Cordon Blue to find out. Well, uh, Le Cordon Bleu, uh, obviously we've been around uh, since 1895. It was founded in, in Paris, France. And we have 16 Le Cordon Bleu schools in the United States. Uh, we've been here for 10 years in Atlanta, uh, very proud of that. We have programs for both the professional and the enthusiast. Yeah, the weekend classes is our Blue Ribbon Kitchen classes. And we do a wide variety of things from introductory, basic, fundamental cooking skills. There's a wide variety of classes there. Um, surely, you know, from the basic level, Level, even up to advanced. And today, I'm learning how to make a delectable dessert known as Petit Four. I joined Chef Kyle Reynolds' pastry class to make these tiny, tasty treats. So first off, everyone, you have frangipan in front of you. This is an almond cake, and we're going to layer it to make Petit Fours. To start, Chef instructs us to grab a knife and run the blade around the edges of the cake to separate it from the pan. We cut the cake in thirds, grab some strawberry jam, and spread it on two of the layers. How come all my classmates seem to have an idea what they're doing and I'm still working? <laughs> <laughs> we stack our cakes and prepare to cover them. So next, we need to roll out some marzipan to put on top. So uh, let's put our cakes on the rack over here, just to get them out of our way. Yeah. Right now, my dough is, well, my marzipan is a circle, and my cake is what shape? Rectangle. rectangle, right? So we want this to be a rectangle, so. Yeah, I know this mine's is not exactly rectangle, but you know, where I grew up, you know, we didn't have regular rectangles. Right. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> Just go with it, okay. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and grab our cakes and bring them over to our station. Yeah, just me, see? <laughs> Always had a problem with thirds. And you can see, mine's completely off. The next dilemma that we've got is, how do you get this onto the cake? So I'm gonna put the rolling pin on top of the dough, lift up that leading edge, and then just start to roll it up in the rolling pin. And then you're just gonna let the rolling pin roll it right over the top. And any excess marzipan, just trim flush with the edges of the cake. Obviously, my classmates are a little more advanced than I am. Next, we need to cut the cake. I typically use a ruler for this, and I like to mark it off at three quarters of an inch. Why don't you go ahead and get started? Oh, that's right, because you know it's going to take a minute. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> we cut the cake into petite, bite-sized pieces and began icing and designing. Bring it close to the bowl so that you're not dripping all over the place. There we go. I'm probably going to do that anyway. <laughs> and so I'm getting the hang of it. That one's covered. Almost. You know, practice makes perfect. It's all right to, to fail. You can learn from failure. Notice I missed the whole thing when you said that. <laughs> the masterpiece preparation continues as Chef Kyle heats and mixes some chocolate icing for us to use for decorating. Mind. That's a pretty pipeable consistency. Grab your paper bag, fill it up about halfway. And the next thing is just kind of figure out what you want to do for the decoration on the top. And let's try to practice some of the piping. I have no idea what it is, but I like it. So after mastering the art of making petit fours, I earn the coveted crown. On behalf of La Cordon Blue Atlanta, our president, Glenn Mack, our whole staff, we now honor you with the toque. You have graduated to chef. Wear it well. Thank you, thank you. Oh, I couldn't have done it without my classmates. This is so wonderful. Georgia is making a name for itself in the world of TV and film. And if you're a fan of The Walking Dead, I suggest you follow Ashley. You've heard the term Hollywood South, but I think it goes by a much more original name. 
Georgia. Our great state holds its own as a choice location for the TV and film industry, and well, there are a couple of diehard fans who won't let the country forget that. I'm Carrie Sagal Burns. I am the chief movie buff. And I'm Patty Davis. I'm the head television fanatic, and we, we are, are Atlanta, Atlanta Movie, movie Tours. Tours. I was giving tours around my neighborhood, which is Castleberry Hill in downtown Atlanta, and Patty invited me to the opening of a restaurant. We started talking, and she said we should do this as a business, and we did. Running every weekend with Big Zombie Tours 1 and 2, a general Atlanta film sites tour, and their newest, Margaret Mitchell's Gone with the Wind tour, these two movie mavens know Georgia locations like the blood in their veins. All of this is, is, you know, public information that we like to take people to. We don't go to live film sets. So that's one of the big keys, is that unless it happens accidentally. Here, this is Terminus. Here it is. Feast your eyes. Oh, we got security down there. Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What Here's the very rail car where all of our characters were captured. Spoiler alert, if you haven't caught up with the season. <laughs> and held hostage here. And this is the way season four concluded. I love Atlanta. <laughs> You're gonna be able to step into it the sets of your favorite characters and be right where they were when they were filming all those amazing scenes. For me, the choice was clear. I wanted to relive The Walking Dead, AMC television's smash hit with an international following, all based on the comic book by the same name. To go where hundreds of living, rotting corpses had gone before me. To gaze with my own eyes upon the Georgia structures that defended Rick Grimes, Daryl Dixon, and the rest of the cast, I needed to experience Big Zombie Tour, part two. Welcome to Woodbury. We're in Woodbury. The Woodbury right now. It's actually Sonoy, Georgia. Looks just like the show, The Walking Dead. Amazing, I have chills. And there it is. The official Walking Dead store. Tour goers meet at the Woodbury shop in downtown Sonoy, stocked floor to ceiling with bloodied gags and zombie merch galore. A doomsday preppers paradise. Walking Dead coasters. Everyone should have a set. Everyone makes fun of a redneck until the zombie apocalypse. It's a true statement. What do you even put in a zombie survival bag? Have I learned nothing from the show? Can't take your hair dryer. I know that much. Mrs. Gerald Dixon. Here's to hoping. Let's get on this bus. <laughs> Once you've had your fill of thrills, it's all aboard the AMT bus for a three-hour excursion of Coweta County, home to the everyday locations featured in The Walking Dead seasons two through four. Show clips set the scene for locations that, with a little bit of background from your tour guide incognito, come alive before you. The only things you won't see aboard this bus are zombies, Walkers, biters, skin eaters, geeks, rotters, actors on the show refer to the undead as pretty much anything creative except the Z word. Herschel's farm, a private residence, and of course, the prison, a studio setting. And what you will see looks eerily familiar. Please, ladies and gentlemen, try to contain yourselves. Exclusive access, here we go. Oh, I know what it is. We're about to find out what this is, but I already know. I think it's the zombie arena. Later during Big Zombie Tour 2, there's a pit stop in downtown Noonan for coffee and snacks. The last thing you want to say on a tour bus full of zombie fans is that you're hungry. You know what I'm saying? This, the site of yet another iconic zombie apocalypse tale, Zombieland. While some guests refueled, the rest of us learned how to walk like the walking dead. We got your meal, because you got to have a a goal to achieve. Having emerged scrape, scratch, and bite free at the conclusion of the full tour, mum's the word to preserve the magic, it was time to corner our mysterious tour guide. Well, I'm here to pick your brain on everything you might know, not to eat your brain, just okay. to pick it. That's fine. Yeah, I'm no we'll threat We'll have a mutual all. agreement there. I won't eat you if you won't eat me. Agreed, let's shake on that. Awesome. So who's your favorite character on The Walking Dead? Uh, I would be Rick by far. Rick's your favorite character? Absolutely. No one ever says that. I know. Who do you think 
think my absolute favorite on the show is? Uh, yours? Yeah. It's, I a, would, it's a pair of people. If that I would guess uh, Glenn and Maggie. Yes. yes. Uh, am I that transparent? <laughs> <laughs> but that's the only couple. <laughs> that's true. I gave myself away there. Well, there's a reason we can't see your face today, Michael. So that's I've, correct. I've, I've kept you the shrouded man. Um, so can you tell me, man of mystery, why we can't see your face? Why we can't show our audience your face today? Uh, because I may or may not be an actor, and I may or may not work on certain productions that uh, people may be interested in. Are affiliated with the show we're <laughs> scouting today from a location standpoint. So what you're telling me, Michael, is you never really know who might be a zombie. Make sure you stick around. We'll show you how long it really takes to become a zombie. But first, let's head to Thomasville. In the mood for some real Southern cooking? Well, it doesn't get any better than Jonah's Fish and Grits here in downtown Thomasville. Owned by husband and wife team Caleb and Lauren Brown, this family business is a local favorite. We come at least one or two times a week. <laughs> one or two times a week? Yes. Really? Yes. And it is even becoming a nationwide favorite. And you came all the way from Arizona for the fish and grits here? Yes. I ordered the shrimp. Okay. And it's phenomenal. Um, probably order a second one. Favorite dishes are the mahi tasso, the harvest salad, the veggie plate with red cabbage slaw, and of course, those southern favorites, fried green tomatoes and shrimp and grits. I love it, it's excellent. All the dishes here are simply heavenly, which leads us to how Jonah's Fish and Grits got its name. In a church service in Gainesville, Florida, one Sunday, and I heard a, a sermon about Jonah. I definitely can relate to Jonah, you know, and always being obedient. Anyways, he ended up being obedient and did what the Lord wanted him to do. And at that time, I was actually thinking about a, a restaurant and a seafaring theme. And I said, what better to, a way to incorporate my faith? And you know, everybody thinks of the big fish when they think of Jonah. That has given me some divine inspiration to find out how they make those glorious fish and grits. All right, hanging out here in the kitchen with Carl the Cook. How are you, Carl the Cook? All right, it's a little warm. Uh, a little, yeah, it's a little warm in here. All right, I am all geared up and ready to go. We are cooking up one of your specialties. What are we cooking? This is the tasso mahi. Okay, how do we grill this up? Carl adds Cajun seasonings and some other secret seasonings we can't tell you about. They would just put a little butter on the black and bar. Okay. Yeah, and a little more butter on it. I'm gonna keep it juicy. More butter is always a good thing. Then Carl Cover covers it up to steam. Cooks about three and a half minutes on each side. Excellent. And then while that's cooking, we move over here. Good, because I'm doing a really great job of nothing in here, so put me to work. <laughs> what, what can I do to help out? Time for even more butter. I knew it. One, two, three, four, five pots of butter. Then it's time for those secret ingredients. Shh. Then add some fireworks to the aforementioned secret ingredients. Yeah, I can't tell you what's in it. Time to plate it up for all those hungry customers. Pretty and goodness. A nice heaping scoop of collard greens. Nice. And the rest on the side, just like that. And how do you guys make your collard greens? Anything? Oh, that's a real secret. You see the luck on his face? Mahi Tasso, Jonas Fish and Grits, with 17 secret ingredients. <laughs> we won't be able to find out what they are, but they all taste good. And then one last order of the day, a big bowl of grits with a candle on top, of course, to serve up to a very special customer who just happens to be celebrating his 90th birthday today. This is how great this restaurant is. Instead of a birthday cake, we get happy birthday to you. What better way to ring in your 90s than by blowing out your candle, not atop a cake, but in a big bowl of grits and heavenly grits at that. Thanks to Atlanta Movie Tours, I'm getting a special opportunity to be transformed into a zombie. What everyone wishes they could be as fans of The Walking Dead, right? So without further ado... We're going to turn you into a disgusting, nasty, horrifying zombie today. Sounds fantastic. Zombie makeup artist. All right, well, let's do it. I'm ready. All right. Contacts. Yes, the fun part. Describe, these are interesting looking. They're mesh. I don't know if the camera can see, they're mesh. You ever been airbrushed before? Yes. Okay. Normally it's human skin tone. Yeah, this is not so much this time. You wouldn't be a zombie without some blood. Oh, that, yeah, that's right. That's what that is? I can't even tell. Let me get really close. Oh, yeah. 
It's kind of like jelly, actually, but it probably doesn't taste very good, so. It's called Teeth Stain, and you're gonna hate me forever because of using this. More blood. Now it's time to go and torment some of the townspeople. Let's go do it. That's all for this episode of Georgia Traveler. I'm David Zelski. Until next time, pleasant journeys. Georgia Traveler is produced in partnership with the Georgia Department of Economic Development. This is a GPB original production.